Hello everyone, and welcome to part 4 of how to make Pong in Unity. The last time we got our ball bouncing around the scene the way we want it to. Now, I would like to start getting this scoreboard to keep track of the left player score and the right player score. So the way we're going to do this is through a script in the game manager. So let's add a component, go to new script, and let's just call it count score. And what this script will do is access our text, this text here, and based on which side of the screen that the ball exits on, it will increment one of these values. So let's get started with our coding. So in our count score text, we're going to need to define a few things. The first two things are variables for our bat scores. So let's create a private integer. Let's call it left score, bat one score. And let's initialize it to zero. Let's create a private integer named bat two score initialize it to zero. And then what we need is a public text. And let's just name it scoreboard. Now as you see, the public text has this red. So what you need to do is add a statement up here saying using Unity Engine dot UI. And what this does is grant you access to a few more functions and statements in Unity, such as text type variables. So now, if I were to go back into Unity and select my game manager, you see that there is this looking for a text object. And I can input our score up here. Also, there's a strange bug that's been happening where the game object stopped displaying. It They're actually still there, and I found that if you double click on one of your game objects, they reappear. I'm not sure what causes it, so I have a strong feeling that it's an in-editor issue, not for your game. Alright, so before we actually change the text, we need to make it so our game actually knows which one when to increment these two variables. So what I'm going to do is print something on the terminal, and that's this thing down here, or the console. And what I want to print is that one score, and then just a comma to separate them, and bat two score. And this way we can just keep track of these two variables as the game is running. So what we're going to do is increment the variables based on the ball, ball's position. So let's create another public variable, game object, ball. And we're going to initialize ball to game object, wait with the capital G, dot find the game object named ball. And what this will do is just go into the scene, find what ball is, and then name this variable ball so we can access it. And then what we want to do is just use very similar code to what we have in our ball controller, only for these if statements we want to say ball.transform.position and instead of modifying any game object's position, we want to change the score. So when the game object, when the ball travels to the right side of the screen, we increment ball 2's score, and when it goes to the left side of the screen, we increment ball 1's score. So, now that that's done, if 
I were to go to Unity and just test, and that should increment to the left. Yep, wait a minute. I might have done it backwards. Yeah, I think I did that backwards. This should be ball one score, and this should be ball two score. Other than that, it works. So now that we're counting our variables, we can start modifying our scoreboard up here. Or er, this. Now getting the score part of our text to update is actually pretty simple. We go to this public text we created and modify the text value to be bat1 score and we gotta convert it to a string and what a string is basically like this in quotations because computers cannot look at a number and display it as a string automatically you gotta convert it also and then we want to dash in between and then make it display bat2 score and add a semicolon. Oh wait, convert it to string. So this line of code will be updating our scoreboard. So if I were to click play, we're starting at 0, 0. The right, left side scores. And this should get the left side to score. Which it did. So as you can see now, we have our scoreboard. We have our ball moving, but we still have a bit to do to polish it. And what I mean by polishing is we take certain components of our game and just tweak them to improve the overall product. Well, let's think about what we need to change. First, I don't like how the ball is moving in very predictable directions. I think it would be a bit more interesting if it could move horizontally left and right and based on which direction you're going it'll kick it in a 45 degree angle or it will kick it down to a horizontal or something so you have a bit more control over which direction the ball is moving i also want it to wait in the center of the screen for a few seconds and then launch out in uh six different ways we're not going to have it move vertically up and down that would be pointless Another thing that we're going to need to do is make it so when one player reaches a certain score, then it shows some text, ends the game, and declares one of these players the winner. So that wraps it up for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to polish how our ball moves around so the player has more control over which direction it goes. And we'll make it pause at the beginning of each match. So the player has a bit more time, or there's a bit more leniency, I should say. So, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And be sure to stay tuned for the next one. Goodbye!